Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello and welcome back to my course on developing soft skills and personality. We are in the middle of fourth week and uh, this is 21st lecture. In this week, I started with looking at the significance of listening, particularly listening as a very basic and integrated communication skill in particular. And then uh, at the beginning I started talking to you about its significance and then in the previous lecture I introduced to you active listening and this one I am going to talk about barriers to listening and then I will just conclude this concept on listening as such and then we will move towards other aspects of listening and speaking. I will tell what I am planning to do at the end of uh, this lecture. Uh, in this one we are going to focus particularly on barriers to active listening, but before we start I would like to uh, give you some highlights about what we did in the last lecture. In the last lecture I talked to you about good communication as an integral part of good listening. In fact, I said that good communication is good listening and good listening is an active integrated communication skill that demands energy and know-how. It is purposeful, powerful and productive. Active listening in order to define and describe active listening, I just told you that it is whole body listening. The ears are fully attentive, the eyes are completely watchful, the eyes are not missing any nonverbal cues as well as it is actively looking for the verbal ones which are coming from the speaker. Apart from just eyes and ears, the other parts of the body just uh, like hands and feet, they remain still, they do not distract the speaker, they do not give any wrong impression to the speaker. The heart itself remains very compassionate and the entire body leans towards the speaker showing that the person is inclined, interested and then the person is also trying to show empathy towards the speaker. So, that is why active listening is called as whole body listening. I ended the lecture with giving you some tips for becoming an active listener. Some of the important tips that highlighted were, uh, I asked you to be courteous and considerate. I told you that you treat the speaker to whom you are listening to just like a very favorite guest who comes to your home. Do not interrupt, note down important points, minimize self-talk, maximize your listening, stay focused, do not get distracted, encourage the person even if you know the person you can even give a pat sometimes, but keep encouraging the person by your nod and other nonverbal cues. Acknowledge efforts, if the person has achieved something, prize the person and even if the person is able to come out of some very difficult uh, things, you just appreciate that effort. Summarize, uh, try to paraphrase whatever has been discussed so far in your own words in a nutshell. Seek clarifications, uh, do not be shy of asking clarifications, if you do not understand anything, just feel free to seek clarification so that the communication process itself becomes complete and effective. Use silence uh, in a very calming and comforting manner and at the end I said that try to conclude with a positive feeling. The person who talks to you and leaves you should leave actually with the good feeling that the person has come and should go with the realization it was worthy of uh, his or her talking to you. Having said this, in this lecture, let us start by looking at the importance of active listening. Why should you become an active listener? So, you all know that there is a saying that knowledge is power. Now, how do you gain this knowledge? Mostly by honing your listening skills by becoming an active listener and if you know clearly whatever you hear, whatever you listen, whatever you 
reprocess in your mind, if you know everything clearly, it saves lots of time for you as well as the other person who is involved in the communication transaction with you. And it also saves so many things from getting damaged. If you are in a company, it can uh, avoid lot of costly mistakes that could come just because of poor listening skills. Active listening is the key in successful personal as well as professional relationships and mind you, I have been telling this that it is the quality of your relationships that determines the level of your success. So, the more enriching relationships you have, the more people will come and bestow success on you. Active listening has a great impact on your job effectiveness. So, people will know that here is a person who listens well, he does not interrupt others. So, he, this is the person whom I can send for a discussion with the foreign delegates. This is the person who is an active listener whom I can confidently send to receive a guest who is very important to me. So, that he listens to the person actively and does what is relevant. So, it has a great impact on your job effectiveness. It will also help you to avoid overall miscommunication in any transactions and conflicts. In job situation, again it increases productivity, even in human communication level at a personal level also it increases productivity. Overall, it improves your persuasive and negotiation skills. So, persuasive skills, you listen better so that you can influence the uh, person in a better manner and you are able to negotiate with the other person better because you uh, listen actively. It has been told that uh, between a Japanese and an American uh, business transaction, Americans since they are very extroverts and then they tend to speak more. So, they come to the uh, Japanese and then the Japanese uh, uh, business tycoon, he just listens to the other person quite uh, attentively, but then never interrupts. The American keeps talking and then uh, talks about everything that he wanted to say and then he talks and as if he feels that he is completely exhausted and as if he realizes that there is nothing else to talk, that is the time the Japanese starts talking. And do not you think that that is how they make uh, successful business dealings and then that is how they show that they are good negotiators just by being very active listeners. Now, having decided that you will become an active listener, you should understand that it is not that easy because there are some obstacles which I call as barriers to active listening. There are some problems. The problems can come from the surroundings around you, but the problems can come from within you. Now, the ones which are coming overall from the surroundings we call as physical barriers such as noise coming from outside. Let us say you are in an auditorium or you are in the classroom, you are listening to the teacher, but then outside in a loudspeaker there is a function going on and your favorite songs are being played. It is very difficult for you to focus on a very serious discussion happening in the classroom which is competing with your favorite songs which are being played outside and then that is louder than even assuming that your uh, uh, teacher is speaking in a low tone. So, uh, this kind of competition that is noise outside and then a serious talk inside is a kind of physical barrier. So, which uh, is very difficult to avoid, but you can still overcome. You can overcome by actually closing the doors, by uh, trying to focus more, trying to go and sit very close to the teacher, you can overcome this. The inside chats, Inside I mean both inside the uh, classroom or auditorium or the room where you are in discussion with somebody. Uh, suppose you are in a uh, classroom, you may be paying attention, but then there are others who are actually chatting, who are actually distracting your attention and then somebody who is sitting so close to you is sharing something with somebody else. So, you can hear that better than what the teacher is telling you. So, this is one problem. The other one is the inside chat that can be happening in your own mind. You may be visualizing some kind of talk discussion with somebody that amounts to your daydreaming. So, you uh, completely are off 
the track and you are not following what is happening in the class just because your mind is wandering and then uh, thinking of talking to somebody else. But again coming back to the actual physical barriers within the room or auditorium, poor acoustics that is poor audio system, poor sound system okay, that can also create problem. Uncomfortable environment for instance, the AC is too cold for you to sit and that day you are slightly feeling feverish or the room is so warm, so hot you keep sweating and then the fan is not working, there is a power cut and then you feel like going out and coming back frequently. The time you go out and come back actually you miss a lot, but then you are not able to follow what has been uh, delivered in your absence. Uncomfortable environment can also be caused depending on the way you are positioned on a chair for example. If the chair itself is uncomfortable for you to sit or if the chair itself is too cozy, too comfortable and then inducing you sleep. So, both cases it becomes uncomfortable in terms of becoming an active listener. Sometimes the chair on which you are seated may have some bugs, so they are biting you. So, that is another uncomfortable situation for you. Message overload, so the speaker is giving you so much of information so quickly, so dense and then sometimes uh, you, you are also asked to listen to this speaker and then you are uh, getting so many other inputs given by two, three other speakers and then you are asked to uh, make some quick analysis of what is being given to you. So, so many things coming to you at the same time can also create problem. But the real problems are the ones which are people related barriers. Again with regard to people related barriers, we can talk about physiological barriers which is affecting the physic as such and the psychological ones. The physiological ones although appears to be uh, somewhat uh, problematic, but one is not so helpless, one can still control. The psychological ones are again rather much more difficult to control than the physiological ones. Look at uh, in terms of physiological conditions health conditions <coughs> such as fever okay, or headache or stomach upset. So, there is a stomach upset, so for a 3 hour long talk you are not able to sustain yourself inside the room and you have to frequent to the restroom and come back again. High fever, so your mind itself is feeling weak, you feel like lying down and sleeping and taking rest. Extreme heat or cold which is again affecting you. Speakers will not incoherent way of talking. So, the he is telling something and then suddenly he is jumping to something and then there is no order, there is no coherence. So, you are not able to follow what the speaker is telling you. There is no PowerPoint or there is no handouts which are there to help you to follow what is the speaker telling to you or even the manner of talking. Some people talk in an accent uh, that does not suit you. Some uh, uh, sometimes like uh, a typical American English uh, spoken by the speaker and you are not so used to listening to that kind of accent. So, although it is English you think that it is very difficult for you to follow. The other uh, uh, barriers are related to psychological conditions. Psychological conditions mostly depends on your moods and emotions and your mindset how you feel, how you think, what is your attitude. So, those are the things which are going to control uh, the way you are going to listen to somebody, the attention that you can give. For example, antipathy for the speaker, if you hate someone, so you will not pay attention. So much so, if you also love someone, again you will not pay attention to what is being said. You will take everything to be 100 percent correct, you will not form any analysis or critical opinion on that. Preconceived notions are again causing problems, fixed mindset as against uh, let us say the growth mindset. If you have a fixed mindset, so you suffer from rigidity of thinking and then you do not want to actually open up your mind to receive new ideas. Close to this is what we call as cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance uh, is like opposite to cognitive assonance. 
So, cognitive assonance is indicating a kind of harmony between ideas which are being transacted. The opposite is cognitive disassonance in which the ideas are opposing to somebody's own views. So, if you say something against my own belief, my own conviction, my own thinking particularly, my brain will try to differ differ accepting your views, it will try to fight, it will try to resist, it will try to even humiliate you, snub you and then it will do everything so that uh, mind feels comfortable, it is it cannot accept completely different views. So, that is cognitive dissonance. So, that happens even among elitist intellectual people, they keep fighting because of uh, this fact. But apart from that, it could be personal stress, anxiety, impatience, intolerance. Let us look at uh, some of these ones quickly and then in detail. One important barrier to active listening is inadequate language base. That is, the speaker is using a kind of vocabulary, particularly technical vocabulary, which the audience are not able to understand or some part of the audience that is maybe you. So, you want to become an active listener, but you are not able to follow what the person is saying because this person is using lot of technical vocabulary. Now, this can be combined with fear or shyness to seek clarifications. It is absolutely no problem if you get up and then politely interrupt by asking, sir, may I understand what you meant by this word or can you tell me what does this mean? Okay. Without fearing that some people will make fun of you, they will laugh at you, if you can see clarification, it will help you to move from one idea to another and follow the person. But inadequate language bias needs to be corrected by improving your own language skills. Partial listening, it is amounting to almost non-listening. People uh, often do not listen fully. The reason because they are distracted with objects on the computer when talking over the phone or reading something during a conversation or even eating something during a conversation or even non-verbally in communication with somebody, somebody is serving food. So, you are just saying, okay, you go, you keep this, okay, you take this away. So, you are gesturing, but at the same time you are talking to somebody on phone. So, it amounts to partial listening and somebody is giving a very important fact about a phone number or an address and then you completely forget this. I will go into detail about this in the coming lecture, uh, particularly about telephone skills and mobile skills. But right now you understand that uh, uh, that amounts to partial listening. The next barrier could be disinterestedness, that is your own lack of interest in the subject. If you are interested in the subject, especially in classrooms or lectures or seminars, symposiums, automatically you will pay attention to it. But if you are not interested in the subject, your mind will keep telling you that, oh, this is boring, this is, this is not uh, interesting to me, so let me leave this place. So, automatically your mind will start to create a kind of disharmony and then between you and the speaker and you will try to think of leaving. Students particularly, uh, if you if you make them watch uh, a cricket match and then if you also uh, show them an educational video, at the end of it you ask questions from the educational video, many are not able to answer very trivial simple questions, but at the same time they are able to remember the cricket score even after 10 days or 20 days when you ask them. Same thing goes with their favorite songs, you ask them questions about their favorite songs which they have listened about their favorite actor, actress, movie, director. So, these are things which are interesting them so much. So, they passionately listen and then they remember even a trivia. Whereas, in case of uh, educational videos, unless it interests them, they are not going to pay attention. So, this is another thing you should keep in mind if you want to remove this barrier, create interest in the subject. The other common thing that most of us have and which acts as a barrier to active uh, listening is our uh, normal prejudging of the speaker before the uh, speech itself. Now, most of the times uh, we inadvertently unknowingly form conclusion about the speech just by looking at the speaker's dress, appearance, posture, etcetera. 
a guy who appeared to be uh, almost like a beggar with beard and then very uh, worn out shirt and then uh, people did not want to allow him to even enter into the auditorium. When the name was announced as the most famous and reputed speaker and even uh, the winner of a very eminent prize, he just walked slowly to the stage and then start delivering. When he started delivering, there was thunderous applause. Now, he was a great speaker, but then by appearance many people concluded that maybe he is not really that good. People also prejudge the speaker by gender, like uh, some female speakers at all and vice versa. Some boys do not like uh, uh, male teachers, they prefer only female teachers or vice versa, color preferences. Some people like only uh, people who are white in color, some like brown in color, some like black in color, some like yellow in color. So, because of the preferences again they uh, prejudge the speaker, they will have an opinion with this color, this person will not be able to talk well. Status and stereotypes also affect critical thinking. Status uh, for example, uh, somebody has won a prestigious award. So, you immediately think that he or she must be a very good uh, speaker. So, you immediately jump into conclusion. The person may not be really that good. And the other thing is also possible because somebody did not win some best teacher award, you may think that the teacher may not be really good. So, that also may not be correct. So, that is prejudging the speaker and the speech. The other most important one is this developing negativity towards the speaker. Uh, both positivity that is feeling good about the speaker if you like someone as well as feeling bad about the speaker because you hate the speaker. Both are very bad emotional blocks that will affect us terrible barriers to active listening. But in terms of the positive ones, at least you will still pay attention, you will still like the speaker, only your critical thinking may be minimized. But in terms of showing antipathy, negativity towards the speaker, you are completely at loss. So, this is very important again in classroom situations where if you hate the teacher, so you do not pay attention to the subject. You may hate the teacher for whatever reason it may be, it may be even just your prejudice or a misconception about the teacher, but that developing that negativity. So, that will make you underestimate the speaker's capabilities and then you will all the time show animosity by asking irrelevant questions, by asking problematic questions or by snubbing, giving wrong answers. And then even when the speaker tells you something correct, you try to disagree with the speaker's viewpoints, you do not approve of it, you debate endlessly. And overall you end up in constructing distorted message. Whatever is told to you correctly, you try to filter it wrongly and then keep a very distorted message in your mind. So, this negativity I would say is the worst thing which if you feel negative about someone in communication, so you should avoid uh, even the communication situation because I am sure that you will not be able to get any benefit out of it. Change your mind, change your mindset, think something good about the person. If you cannot think something good about the person, at least focus on the subject, just focus on the subject, do not focus on the person. Just try to see what good things the person is going to tell you and then you will like the person also. But eventually if you start with antipathy towards the person, so then you will actually not even develop interest in the subject and that will actually affect you only. Now, the next point, the uh, next one is again coming from uh, uh, one's own uh, weakness, psychological weakness that is diffidence, completely lack of confidence. So, some students in particular or some even adults, they suffer from a defeatist attitude. So, uh, most of the people who uh, write to me, talk to me about this, uh, doing this course on soft skills and personality development, they or even about the course on communication skills, they come and tell me, I am from Hindi medium, I am from Gujarati medium, I am from Marathi medium, I am from Telugu medium, all kinds of mediums in which they have not read English. They say that, oh, how can I do this course? Okay. I tell them that if you can understand this much simple English, you will be able to follow this. But despite that, some people develop a kind of defeatist attitude thinking that, no, that guy is from Hindi medium, but he is smarter than me. 
she is from Telugu medium, but she can grasp it better than me, but I am a weak fellow, I am a poor one. So, thus the person undermines self capabilities for fully understanding the subject and that is again acting as a barrier. Students, especially the ones who have this uh, diffidence generally do not ask any questions, they uh, shut their mind inside, they do not want to open up and you also find uh, conference participants suffering from this diffidence. In case of over enthusiasm as well as intolerance, there could be some barriers. Uh, over enthusiasm comes either the person is too much interested in the speaker or the person is just impatient. What you do when you are over enthusiastic, you become impatient and you try to supply gaps in the speaker's ideas as if you are filling in the blanks. The speaker is thinking something, immediately you jump and conclude. Some speakers are slow to come out of their views, but you do not let them complete. You jump and then you complete. So much so is your level of intolerance. Some people are very intolerant and then they do not wait till the end of the speech. They try to conclude the speech or they advance their questions and they keep interfering quickly. So, this can sometimes cut the flow of the uh, speaker, it can also even intimidate the speaker and the speaker will feel completely uncomfortable, which is against the ethos of becoming an active listener. It is even if you are remaining silent, if you remember I said keep a very calm and comforting silence, so that the other person should feel comfortable. So, in the entire process when you are over enthusiastic and intolerant, you are anxious to wind up the communication process. You do not you don't want the other person to talk and you do not want the talk to continue, so you just stop. So, that is another major barrier in active listening. Uh, towards the conclusion, I would like to say that the deep rooted beliefs that we have that could be given to us from culture from our own readings, from the stories that we have listened to, but then from childhood we have developed some beliefs. Sometimes closed minds are formed due to deep rooted beliefs and convictions, stereotypes which we have in our mind. Now, this can lead to superficial listening. Somebody who is coming from a religion uh, which uh, to which I have a different kind of beliefs or I do not subscribe to. So, I tend to listen to the person in a very superficial manner. Now, this can often cause disagreement with the speaker's stance and viewpoint. Not necessarily a religion, it can be any even bet between ideologies, one ideology and another ideology. One's own uh, set of beliefs in terms of culture, the eating, the way of dressing, the other person's beliefs. So, all these things can come into a clash. It can also cause positive bias and influence one's ability to judge. So, what do I mean by this? Your own deep rooted beliefs can make you completely blind to some person and then form a kind of favorable bias. You think good about the person and uh, uh, even if the person is somewhat wrong, it can influence your ability to judge. So, this is something which can act as a barrier towards uh, active listening and you should keep that in mind. So, before concluding, uh, let me give an illustrative example about how you should avoid positive bias and influence. Just uh, listen to this message and then you evaluate. Now, the way the message is given, so you see how you are able to evaluate this. I am just uh, going to read this, so that you let it uh, work on your mind and then you just uh, develop an idea about who is this person behind, this our leader, who is this leader? Our leader had an unhappy childhood and little formal education. His father bitterly opposed his ambition to become an artist. Through self-education, he became the author of a book that became a national bestseller. Obstacles do not discourage him. When others say it is impossible, he hurdles each barrier as it comes. He has built an active youth movement of selected young people. He is known throughout the world for his dynamic speeches. 
his closest associates say of him, he accomplishes incredible deeds out of the passion of his will in order to create the kind of government he believes in. Now, who is this leader who is being so prized and so fondly uh, said about? Now, the person is none other than Adolf Hitler. So, the one that is written in a very eulogistic manner is by a, a very famous follower of Adolf Hitler, but that is just an example to tell you how the way something is being narrated can also uh, sort of facilitate forming a positive bias in you. So, you have to be careful about that, so that the barrier to listening is not formed. Overall, we are concluding this uh, uh, part of uh, communication in which I dealt with significance of listening and then active listening and then barriers to listening. Uh, in the next one, I am going to continue with uh, aspects related to telephone skills and then mobile skills, which are again close to listening as well as speaking. So, before I uh, say bye to you, I just want you to think about this quote, speak in such a way that others love to listen to you, speak in such a way that others love to listen to you, listen in such a way that others love to speak to you. Listen in such a way that others love to speak to you. Thank you for listening to this video. Have a nice day. Bye.